We have very few announcements this morning. As you know, we decided not to convene as a congregation this weekend because we still have a few people who are testing positive and we were uh, lacking help. <laughs> I do want you to know that we will be back next Sunday in the sanctuary, and the Reverend Cindy Carter will be our visiting priest. Also, I'd like to announce that on Thursday morning from 8, because I'm an early riser, until noon, I will be down at the storage unit pricing goods for the longest yard sale. So all of you who are available, I would appreciate your help. We'll have the elements that you need to do that, and it will really move us forward in getting ready for the big ECW project. As a reminder, tomorrow is, of course, the 4th of July, a really important celebration usually um, here in our country, and hope you have um, a lovely 4th. The office will be closed. And without further ado, I'm happy to welcome today Reverend Roy Polina. Father Polina will be leading us in morning prayer. Thank you for coming. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive you all your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen you in all goodness and by the power of the Holy Spirit. Keep you in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips. And our, our mouths shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, Come let us adore him. Please join me in praying the Venite. Come, Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to him with psalms. For the Lord is a great God and a great king above all gods. In his hands are the caverns of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands have molded the dry land. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture, and the sheep of his hand. Oh, that today you would hearken to his voice. Be joyful in God, all you lands. Seeing the glory of his name, seeing the glory of his praise, say to God, how awesome are your deeds because of your great strength and your enemies cringe before you. All the earth bows down before you, sings to you, sings out your name. 
Come now and see the works of God, how wonderful he is in his doing toward all people. He turned the sea into dry land so that they went through the water on foot, and there we rejoiced in him. In his might he rules forever. His eyes keep watch over the nations. Let no rebel rise up against him. Bless our God, you peoples. Make the voice of his praise to be heard, who holds our souls in life and will not allow our feet to slip. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. A reading from Paul's letter to the Galatians. My friends, if anyone is detected in a transgression, you who have received the Spirit should restore such a one in a spirit of gentleness. Take care that you yourselves are not tempted. Bear one another's burden. And in this way you will fulfill the law of Christ. For if those who are nothing think they are something, they deceive themselves. All must test their own work. Then that work, rather than their neighbor's work, will become a cause for pride. For all must carry their own loads. Those who are taught the word must share in all good things with their teacher. Do not be deceived. God is not mocked, for you reap whatever you sow. If you sow to your own flesh, you will reap corruption from the flesh. But if you sow to the Spirit, you will reap eternal life from the Spirit. So let us not grow weary in doing what is right, for we will reap at harvest time if we do not give up. So then, whenever we have an opportunity, let us work for the good of all, and especially for those of the family of faith. See what large letters I make when I am writing in my own hand. It is those who want to make a good showing in the flesh that try to compel you to be circumcised, only that they may not be persecuted for the cross of Christ. Even the circumcised do not let themselves do not themselves obey the law, but they want you to be circumcised so that they may boast about your flesh. May I never boast of anything except the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ, by which the world has been crucified to me and I to the world. For neither circumcision nor uncircumcision is anything, but a new creation is everything. As for those who will follow this rule, peace be upon them and mercy and upon the Israel of God. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. I invite you to pray with me, Canical 10 the second song of Isaiah. Seek the Lord while he wills to be found. Call upon him when he draws near. Let the wicked forsake their ways and the evil one their thoughts. And let them turn to the Lord and he will have compassion. And to our God, for he will richly pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. For as rain and snow fall from the heavens and return not again, but water the earth, bringing forth life and giving growth, seed for sowing and bread for eating, so is my word that goes forth from my mouth, it will not return to me empty, but it will accomplish that for which I have purposed and prosper in that for which I sent it. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and will be forever. Amen. Our second reading is from the Gospel of Luke. The Lord appointed 70 others and sent them on ahead of him in pairs to every town and place where he himself intended to go. 
And he said to them, The harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Go on your way. See, I am sending you out like lambs into the midst of wolves. Carry no purse, no bag, no sandals, and greet no one on the road. Whatever house you enter, first say, peace to this house. And if anyone is there who shares in peace, your peace will rest on that person. But if not, it will return to you. Remain in the same house, eating and drinking whatever they provide, for the laborer deserves to be paid. Do not move from house to house. Whenever you enter a town and its people welcome you, eat what is set before you. Cure the sick who are there and say to them, the kingdom of God has come near to you. But whenever you enter a town and they do not welcome you, go into the streets and say, even the dust of your town that clings to our feet we wipe off and pro protest against you. Yet know this, the kingdom of God has come near. Whoever listens to you listens to me, and whoever rejects you rejects me. And whoever rejects me rejects the one who sent me. The 70 returned with joy, saying, Lord, in your name, even the demons submitted to us. He said to them, I watched Satan fall from heaven like a flash of lightning. See, I have given you authority to tread on snakes and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, and nothing will hurt you. Nevertheless, do not rejoice at this, that spirits submit to you, but rejoice that your names are written in heaven. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. In the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Happy 4th of July. I hope you will have a good holiday weekend. You're, it will continue through tomorrow on Independence Day. You know, in the 16th century, the British author and philosopher Thomas Hobbes wrote this, and I quote, In the state of nature, there are no arts, no letters, no society, and which is worse of all, continual fear and danger of violent death. And the life of man is solitary, poor, nasty, brutish, and short. End of quote. The solution to this pitiful situation is for society to form a government so that civilization can be organized. Without governments, Thomas Hobbes believed, quote, the condition of man is a condition of war, of everyone against everyone, end of quote. It seemed to Hobbes that a particular group of people had been equipped and ordained by God to establish governments and to rule the people. These were the kings and the queens. And these kings and queens were not the same as you and me. You see, according to Hobbes, you and I are subject to the law of the land. Royalty, on the other hand, made the law of the land and were subject only to God. This political theory, the divine right of kings, 
was more than textbook philosophy. It was how government operated. Indeed, according to Hobbes, how it was supposed to operate. Now, the people recognized that not all kings and queens would be saintly. Some, in fact, had been scoundrels. But the belief, the belief was that whether sinner or saint, the sovereign had been chosen to rule by God. Those of you who know the British royal coat of arms know the motto upon it, Dieu et mon droit, God and my right. Rebellion against the lawful sovereign was not only illegal and punishable by death, Rebellion against the sovereign was a sin against God's holy ordering of society and punishable by eternal damnation. And the church preached loyalty to the sovereign and denounced those who broke their oath of loyalty. Our first English prayer book included in the ordination service oaths of loyalty to the sovereign as head of the church. Three centuries after Hobbes wrote, a group of men gathered in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania to sign a document that would change their form of government. This document, this document, the Declaration of Independence, begins this way, and I quote, when in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bands which have connected them with another and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitled them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which compel them to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal, that they are endowed by their creator with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving their just power from the consent of the governed." End of quote. The freedom that we share as a nation is founded upon a particular social political understanding. The sociological understanding is that all men are created equal. The political understanding is that governments derives, government derives its power from the consent of the governed. But even these foundational truths rest rest upon a religious bedrock, the laws of nature and of nature's God. There was never any question in the minds of the founding fathers that all power was derivative of the almighty power of God. The Enlightenment had proved Thomas Hobbes was wrong. Royalty. Royalty was not a special class of human beings chosen by God to rule. All men are created equal. And the ability to govern is derived from the people being governed. It was no longer the divine right of kings, but an even older idea, first voiced by a British monk and scholar in the court of King Charlemagne. 
a monk named Alcun, who in the 8th century wrote, Vox Populi, Vox Dei. The voice of the people is the voice of God. The thread of history leads us here today that the United States of America was founded and remains one nation under God. We have not been a perfect nation. Despite what we believe, we permitted slavery that belied our belief in the equality of men. And it took us a couple of centuries to understand that women, as well as men, have equality before God and under the law. Still, the philosophical and religious ideals of our nation have withstood the test of time and of comparison. Godless, communist Marxism, a social political system that actively repressed any religious ideals, rose and fell in less than 100 years. And some 20 years ago, Islamic extremists who pervert their own religion and culture attacked us in their attempt to take away our freedom through terror and threats of terror. Many believe, many believe that our enemies, both past and present, those Nazis, those communists, those terrorists, and others, Many believe that they failed because we have a superior military-industrial complex. Yet in 1776, the signers of the Declaration of Independence, men like Thomas Jefferson, Benjamin Franklin, and John Adams, in 1776, they faced the most formidable military force in the world, the British Empire relying not on our mart, might, but on the grace and protection of God and, and their individual willingness to do the right thing regardless of the cost. We do well in this dangerous world of ours to remember that Fighter aircraft, pilotless drones, special forces troops, and all the satellite intelligence in the world, and above it, cannot defeat evil. Darkness is overcome by light, and good overcomes evil. And need I remind you, only God is good. We can do no better in the 21st century than to place our faith in God as the signers of the Declaration of Independence did in the 18th century. Knowing that their Declaration of Independence could mean the loss of everything, including their lives. The signers closed with these words, and I quote, and for the support of this declaration, with a firm reliance on the protection of divine providence, we mutually pledge to each other our lives, our fortunes, and our sacred honor. God bless America, now and always. Amen. Let us say together the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit 
and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Supper day. Show us your mercy, O Lord. And grant us your salvation. Clothe your ministers with righteousness. Let your people sing with joy. Give peace, O Lord, in all the world. For only in you can we live in safety. Lord, keep this nation under your care. And guide us in the way of justice and truth. Let your way be known upon earth. Your saving health among all nations. Let not the needy, O Lord, be forgotten nor the hope of the poor be taken away. Create in us clean hearts, O God. And sustain us with your Holy Spirit. O God, you have taught us to keep all your commandments by loving you and our neighbor. Grant us the grace of your Holy Spirit that we may be devoted to you with our whole heart and united to one another with pure affection through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. O oh God, you make us glad with the weekly remembrance of the glorious resurrection of your Son, our Lord. Give us this day such blessing through our worship of you that the week to come may be spent in your favor through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, the author of peace and lover of concord, to know you is eternal life and to serve you is perfect freedom. Defend us, you, defend us, your humble servants, in all assaults of our enemies that we, surely trusting in your defense, may not fear the power of any adversities <clears throat> or any adversaries through the might of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose spirit the whole body of your faithful people is governed and sanctified, receive our supplication and prayers which we offer before you for all members of your holy church, that in their vocation and ministry, they may truly and devoutly serve you. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray these intercessions and thanksgiving for the church presiding Bishop Michael, Bishop Glenda, Bishop Pryor, missionaries overseas, those serving in the military and in areas of natural disaster, and remembering especially Marquita Crane and Jean Watkins, Reese Fitzgerald, Becky Davis, Chip Mann, Joanne Glover, Rosalie Ship, Wesley and Kat Griffith, Lynette McCary, Donna Frost, Joan and Jim Byram, Oliver Benton, Beth Tabarino, Trey, Wayne and Phyllis King, Jerry Johnson, Brenda Inger, Lisa, Matthew, Katie, Sarah Wilcox, 
Becky Cavillian, Ben and Susan Booth, Tong McMichael, Sarah Wilcox, Lovely, and Pen Pals. And for birthdays on 7-8, Cheryl Knoll, and anniversaries on 7-6, Melinda and Justin Ball. Your individual prayers and intercessions are welcome. I offer this prayer for Independence Day. Lord God Almighty, in whose name the founders of this country won liberty for themselves and for us, and lit the torch of freedom for nations then unborn, grant that we and all the people of this land may have grace to maintain our liberties in righteousness and peace. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please join me in the praying of the great thanksgiving. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all for your immeasurable love and the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in, in holiness and righteousness all our days, through Jesus Christ our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. And pray with me the prayer of St. Chrysostom. Almighty God, you have given us grace at this time with one accord to make our common supplication to you and you have promised through your well-beloved Son, when two or three are gathered together in his name, you will be in the midst of them. Fulfill now, O Lord, our desires and petitions as we may be for us, granting us in this world knowledge of your truth, and in the age to come, life everlasting. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. May the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen.